Um, so it is with a great pleasure I come here in, uh, in Saarbrücken uh, to be with you uh, today. And um, it's an honor for me to be uh, in the same selected group with uh, Lilo and Georg and so um, Paolo, Vercellini and Caterina and so, uh, so many colleagues I, I have already admired for their uh, expertise, for their rigor, for, uh, for their work. So, uh, um, usually, uh, during the last years, I have been invited to speak about endometriosis of sacral root, sciatic nerve, uh, rectal endometriosis, or uh, about the general organization of the healthcare in endometriosis. And um, this time, Harald asked me to speak about uh, the risk of reoperation. So the presentation I give today is new. <laughs> it, it has been prepared for, uh, for you, for, uh, for uh, today. And uh, it is the first time I present uh, it. And uh, I hope you will find it interesting, even though we speak about more than about uh, epidemiological data than about uh, surgical technique itself. So it is my pleasure to present you uh, my thoughts, which are our thoughts, about the risk of reoperation after complete uh, excision of uh, endometriosis. So, always when I perform a study, I, I start by a hypothesis which is based on a question the patients or my colleague ask to me. So this study was was made on the was based on the question what is the reoperation rate after a surgery because it is a very frequent question the patient asks the risk of reoperation is often an argument against the surgery i propose because the patient say okay but why having surgery because anyway i will recur i read somewhere that anyway when you have an endometriosis you have a recurrence and also i heard colleagues saying the surgery of endometriosis should be planned as late as possible in order to reduce the number of, of reoperations. Far from more, in patients with one previous incomplete surgery, the patients say, why should I have another surgery? Because I had one last year and look at the nodule I have on the rectum, it recurred. And my answer is not, it's not actually a recurrence, the nodule has already been there. So I tried to, to answer the questions and we have to be aware from the onset that reoperation, reoperation rate does not mean a recurrence rate. So the reoperation rate may be, uh, may be impacted by, of course, by the recurrence rate, which depends on the type of endometriosis, of the localization, of the type of surgical procedure. But also the rate of reoperation depends on the length of the follow-up. Because longer you follow up the patients, higher the rate of reoperation may be. It also depends on the complication risk related to the reoperation and to the expected functional outcomes you may have after the reoperation. It depends also on who performed the first surgery, on the prevention of recurrences during the interval since the, the previous surgery, and last but not least, if the hysterectomy has been done during the first surgery. So my study was based on my uh, prospective database because uh, I, I have a PhD in epidemiology and uh, in 2009, I built a prospective database, very exhaustive, and I, always, I have always had a clinical researcher managing this uh, database with uh, the follow-up of patients. Because you need someone to manage the database, otherwise it is impossible to, to handle. So I uh, analyzed 1,092 patients I, uh, who had the surgery in the, uni in the University Hospital of Rouen, where I had worked until uh, 2018. And this woman has been followed until 2020, meaning that uh, some of them had 10 years of follow-up. And it helped me, this database helped me to answer the questions, what is the reoperation rate? 
and what are the reasons of the reoperation after a complete surgery of endometriosis I performed first myself. Of course, this population corresponds to a population of a tertiary referral center, so uh, patients had already had a surgery uh, in uh, more than 50% uh, of cases. In 30% of cases, the surgery was destined to cure endometriosis. So myself, I performed a reoperation in these patients. Most of them were nullipara, and one third of them were infertile. <clears throat> Surgical procedure were rather complex because uh, two patients out of three had a surgery for colorectal endometriosis. One patient out of six for a urinary tract nodules, 4% for sacral plexus nodules, and of course, in the endpoint reoperation rate, I did not include the reoperations done for immediate postoperative complications. So I took into account un only reoperation, reoperations which were related to the disease, to the endometriosis, but not to complications of the first surgery. I recorded. 14%, 14.2% of reoperations. And as you can see, the probability to have a reoperation increases with the follow up. It was only 3% after the first year, of course. First year after the surgery is rare that we have to go to complete our surgery. But it could go up to 28% after 10 years. So this is the reoperation rate, estimation of the reoperation rate in my patients is 28% 10 years after the excision. Not all the reoperations were due to the pain relapse. <clears throat> As you can see, one quarter of them uh, is related to the management of infertility, meaning that patients were referred to ART and they had the hydrosalpings or endometrioma, and my colleagues asked me to, to manage them before uh, before the IVF. But most, most of, uh, of cases had surgery for pain relapse. Now, when you look at the, <clears throat> at the procedure performed during the reoperation, you see that from far, the most frequent procedure was the hysterectomy for adenomyosis. Then, salpingectomy for hydrosalpings. And only in third position, we had bowel surgery for a recurrence of the bowel, and endometriomas. And this is due not to the frequency of the recurrences of endometriomas, but to our beha behavior not to reoperate each time we have a recurrent endometrioma. If you look at the reoperation rates depending on the type of lesions, you can see that women with superficial endometriosis <coughs> are likely to have a reoperation due to pain relapse in 13% of cases, which is similar with the reoperation in women with deep endometriosis and is higher than reoperation rate in women with colorectal endometriosis. But in this case, we have a higher uh, rate of reoperation due to infertility related to, uh, to the deep uh, endometriosis of the colonorectum. And if you try to identify independent factors by a multivariate analysis, which is the Cox model, you observe that performing the hysterectomy during the first procedure and having pregnancies after the surgery are the two main fa independent factors which decrease the rate of reoperation, which is logical. So after the study, I could I could draw some conclusion that the reoperation rate in the long term after a complete excision of endometriosis is low, 14% of cases, even though the patients had a surgery for bowel or for deep endometriosis. So reoperation rate is one woman out of seven, 10 years after the procedure. The hysterectomy should be an option in women with adenomyosis and with, uh, without uh, pregnancy intention, because we may spare a reoperation to perform the hysterectomy for uh, adenomyosis that we cannot handle with uh, pills and uh, offer medical treatment. The pregnancy related amenorrhea, natural amenorrhea, is protective, of course. 
The long follow-up is mandatory in order to have an accurate idea about the actual reoperation rate. I did not mention that the rate of follow-up, uh, the loss of follow-up patients in my Syria is 5%. So we, our estimation is, is rather precise. And the last question is, are these results extrapolable? It may be extrapolated to all the centers. And to answer this question, you have to come back to the factors which may impact on the reoperation. And the first, of course, is the recurrences rate. And we speak of the recurrence, <clears throat> we have to, to think what the term recurrence means. And uh, Christel Mullman tried to identify five, five steps, five levels of recurrences. The first one is the recurrence of symptoms. And for patients, if they have, after the surgery, dysmenorrhea, they are sure they recur because, of course, endometriosis is responsible for dysmenorrhea. But this is very unspecific. It is very difficult to state an, endo an endometriosis recurrence on the basis of only symptoms, which may be due to uh, idiopathic dysmenorrhea or to consequences of your surgery. Then we have, <coughs> we have the imaging techniques which are very precise in, uh, for endometriomas, but less specific for recurrences, presumed recurrences of deep endometriosis or superficial lesions. Then we have the surgery. We perform an advanced uh, dissection in a, in a pelvis after a past surgery, and we did not find recurrence. We may also miss a deep recurrence uh, on contact with the sacral plexus because we did not want to dissect so far. Then we may find lesions, fibrosis lesions. We perform a biopsy, and the biopsy is negative. It does not mean that the recurrence does not exist just near from the site where you had the biopsy. And the definitive diagnosis is the histological proof. Now, when you speak about the recurrence, you know that not all the recurrence, not, not all the organs may present the same rate of recurrences. So you know, we know very well that the ovaries are from far more likely to recur than the rectal nodules. We have the randomized trial of Seracchioli, who clearly demonstrated that women undergoing excision of endometriomas and having periods two years after the, after the surgery have a recurrence rate 29%. This is related to the uh, endometriomas formation related to uh, the ovulation. Conversely, 10 years after performing a colorectal resection, the rate of recurrence is very low, it's 5%. So much lower than, than the ovary. As regards the superficial recurrences, I think they were much more frequent, but not always symptomatic. So when the patient asks what is the risk of recurrence, it depends what kind of recurrence she means. There is another uh, uh, convention that if we perform a complete excision of endometriosis, we have less recurrences, of course. It is logical. But what the term complete means? Do we mean complete excision of macroscopic of what we see, or we want to go further and to remove microscopic, lesion, microscopic foci as we try to do in cancer? The completeness of excision, I studied this on uh, <clears throat> uh, related to different uh, techniques of rectal endometriosis. And now I'm convinced that when you perform a shaving, you leave microscopic foci in, let's say, I, d I didn't say 100%, because 100% uh, and 0% are not very serious in medicine, but let's say 90% or more than 90%. We leave microscopic foci behind. When you perform a disc excision, we may find in 30% of cases macroscopic foci on the edges, meaning that very likely they are also on the edges, edges you suture on the rectum. But when you perform a colorectal resection, we may find satellite microscopic foci as far as 3 to 4 centimeters from the macroscopic nodule in 30% of cases. It means that on the low rectum where we cut we put the stapler one centimeter below the nodule, we may leave some nodules. Far from more, Dan Martin asked me to carry out a study where 
I try to palpate far, where, where I perform a colorectal resection through a suprapubic incision, I palpated the, the colon far from the macroscopic nodule. I was surprised to find small nodules, palpable but almost invisible, in the depth of the uh, rectal wall, of colon wall, in 25% of cases. So maybe when I perform a disc excision or a shaving, I may leave behind this kind of very small nodules, palpable but not visible, in 20-25% of patients. However, the rate of clinical recurrence, ob obvious recurrences in rectum is much lower. <clears throat> because 10 years ago, I finished the unique randomized trial comparing colorectal resection to conservative surgeries by shaving or disc excision. There were 60 patients, and 55 of them were managed in Rouen, and we follow up them until 10 years with no loss of follow-up. So we know that 10 years after these procedures, the rate of recurrences was 5%. So we may leave 20, in 20% 20 of cases small micronodules, but at the end we'll have only 5% of recurrences. There is a huge gap. If you look at one of the pioneers of the, of the endometriosis surgery, David Reynolds, who sadly passed away last month, he published 30 years ago a study where he tried to see the rate of recurrences and in how many cases he actually found endometriosis, uh, reoperation and he found endometriosis. So he reported seven years after the procedure, 55% of reoperations with only 19% of actual recurrences. So five, seven years after the procedure. Of course, the length of the follow-up and also the rate of the loss of follow-up patients is crucial in order to estimate your reoperation rate. Because if you come back to the end of study, at two years we had one rectal recurrence, at seven years we had the second one, at 10 years we have the third one. So you have to provide a long-term follow-up in order to state that this is the number of recurrences and the number of the reoperations. And this long-term follow-up, there are only a couple of teams in the world which may provide this. And each time you will look at, at the study where the author said, we have a long-term follow-up, try to understand or ask them how many patients were lost to follow-up because uh, they moved away or did not answer. And this will increase the confidence intervals of, uh, of uh, the, the number. Now, the rate of reoperation may also be influenced by very, very logical arguments, such as the, what, has, what has been done during the first surgery. So here is a patient I performed yesterday. It was a huge endometriosis involving both parametria, the <coughs> rectum. So we performed a very complicated procedure where I dissected the both parametria until sacral roots on the right side and we carried out the coloanal anastomosis. I think the reoperation rate in this patient will be very, very low. Because <laughs> even me, I will try to find all the arguments not to come back. It will be very difficult to look for a one centimeter nodule recurred in the, in the depth parametrium to dissect again and to pick it up. Now, it depends who performed the first surgery. Because I think we are more likely to perform a new surgery if the first surgeon is not well known and uh, we suppose that he did not perform a complete excision, then if the patient has been uh, managed by Jörg. So if the patient come to me two years after a surgery done by Jörg Eckstein and said, I'm painful and on the MRI there is something which may look like a fibrosis or a deep endometriosis recurrence, I will think it is a fibrosis, postoperative fibrosis, because I know that the surgery was well done. So it depends who performed the first surgery in the decision of the reoperation. And I think that the major point of the treatment of endometriosis is based on the prevention of recurrences. So we have a disease which has a potential of recurrence and progression 
which cover 35 years. If you perform a surgery in a patient 25 years old, it means that she had ahead 25 years where she can recur and the disease may progress. It means that your surgery represents only one step on her treatment. We do not know where the endometriosis comes from, but we know very well that if the patient is under amenorrhea, the rate of recurrences may decrease more than threefold. It has been proved on endometriomas. And we know that the progression of deep nodules is not observed, is not uh, revealed when the patient is under amenorrhea. So my advice and our advice is to give a continuous pill as long as the patient does not intend to get pregnant. And if she intends to get pregnant, to stop the pill for a very precise period, let's say uh, nine months or one year if she's not painful, and not longer. Now, what about the future? I think we have a huge opportunity with the de development of artificial um, uh, intelligence because we can, we will be able soon to identify microRNA or uh, all over genetic uh, signatures for subtypes of endometriosis. And it is very important to identify a signature for endometriosis, which are very aggressive, very likely to recur. In this case, we have all the arguments to ask the patient to stay strictly under pill for, for the rest of the time until the menopause. And conversely, we may have signatures for endometriosis where if the surgery was completely carried out, we can consider the patient as cured, definitely cured. And I think that surgeons as us, we, we are very helpful for sure. We, are, we, we may cure, let's say, 4,000, 4, 5,000 patients during our career. But our colleagues, work on microRNA, if they can find a signature or if they can find a receptor, specific receptor on endometriosis <coughs> cell and a treatment which goes directly on this receptor and destroy only the endometriosis <coughs> cells without being contraceptive, without having side effects, they will cure 100 million women. So we are very helpful, but we will never have the Nobel Prize for uh, curing the endometriosis and finding the treatment of the endometriosis. Thank you very much.